Hi, my name is Andrew Meehan. I'm here in my Christmas jumper in the room where I'm probably going to eat my Christmas dinner about to read to you from a summer novel called Instant Fires, which was published this year by New Island Books. In the novel, a woman called Uta Pfeiffer travels to Heidelberg in Germany, and there she meets a young Irish man called Shawnee Donnelly. Shawnee has his own reasons for being in Heidelberg, which we'll, we'll get to in a moment. But this is Uta as we first meet her, and uh, she's, she's literally just off the plane. They were unmistakably in the middle of Europe. She had forgotten that a country of slow-moving rivers and brown forests could be so radiant. On her way home to Hyde, Heidelberg was itself in hiding and on the way to nowhere in particular. She felt herself under cover as well as completely overwhelmed by the sight of all the allotments and small holdings just as she remembered them. The round-shouldered barns under which huddled saintly wood piles, no movement and the long limp grass and a haze upon all that sweet-looking lettuce. And the day was warm and the Altstadt was full of people. As much as she had been keeping it alive in her mind, Uta had some trouble finding her way to her old door. The Pfeiffer's house overlooked an impressive cobbled courtyard, off a lane, off a hallowed street, ruminating towards Heidelberg's famous river. She passed the building a couple of times before remembering that the workshop had been closed up. The yard her mother used to populate with chives and bay and peony trees was lifeless with broken bushes and upturned bins, and in all probability hadn't been swept all year. And there was a crack. Like the beginning of fireworks. The driver of a ship-sized BMW was attempting to make a turn in front of her parents' front door. Rather than turning, the car was moving back and forth as though mowing along. It would have been easier somehow to unpack the cobbles and move the courtyard than to get the car out of there without 17 attempts to turn it around. The driver might have been about to plow to the wall altogether. No, he hadn't. Yes, he had driven over some kind of chicken coop. It might have been the stupidest thing she'd ever seen. So that's Uta seeing Shawnee for the first time, and let's meet Shawnee Donlan now. He's in Heidelberg, as we say. We had to, he had to leave Ireland in a bit of a hurry. There was a bit of a to-do, let's say, over the, the death of his father, and so he's in Heidelberg, and he's thinking about the dead dad. He took himself off to Germany. Nothing to his name apart from one of Dad's old deodorants and an anthology snatched from the bedside. A man of letters was born, haunting the antiquarians, flinging out the poetry left, right and centre, not above stealing books either. The pale purple, the lilac of the poetry, the cool blues of the novel, the deep greys of the essay, the wild blackness of his brain without someone else's thoughts to fill it. You'd see him above him the holy mountain, the heart sunken into him, helplessly talking to the dead dad, a hallucination you might have called it, a gentle hallucination always. And bold as brass dad would appear, drinking a bottle of tea to himself on Unterestrasse. He'd make appearances in the boudoir too. He had a great snout for altercations in his snack. Other times, Noel Donlan was pure philosophy, pure nature boy. A geography teacher in his day, before hearing the call of the saloon and a bar with his name above the door, a certain stool in Donlan's, him being a certain Donlan. The first brown dinner of the day eaten in the bar, get the news and the company reflect upon it. Not before muting the Angelus, a small bowl of sponge and custard and home then for the other dinner, the first dinner being purely ceremonial. Afterwards, elements notwithstanding, out to the garden. For Noel Donlan's roses, people came all the way across North Connacht. His way of calling you friends was giving out cuttings. An acre of garden, a house, the pub with his name above the door, yet in the greenhouse he'd spent all of August. The tomatoes colouring, Noel cooing them into being. It was a fine balance with the calcium shortages and the potassium. Hosepipe ban, fuck your hosepipe ban, Noel Donlan had a greenhouse to look after. He would have to be coaxed out of there with the last of the tomatoes for ripening on the sill. The jumper on and back to the Angelus for, for back to the bar for the Angelus and the remote control. Summers were for plants and foolishness, autumns for oblivion. You wouldn't see him for the real dinner. Nothing in him apart from a small tin of ravioli every other day. And by no means an alcoholic, no Donald and hating drinking seemed to be the point of it all. Often again after Christmas dinner, relieved to hit the top of the year and a new man by the epiphany. 
Seed catalogues coming in from left and right. From Holland they came. Better boys, Creoles, big boys, early girls. Brandy wine, celebrities, lemon boys, ox hearts. Above all, it was the variety in the tomato world that would keep you going. Thanks to Emer uh, for inviting me to read um, and uh, I wish you all a very happy holiday. Thanks.